Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to work with circuits that contain inductors and capacitors at the same time, but in this case, we also snuck in a little resistor in there, a 100 ohm resistor. So we call this a, an LRC circuit, and because of the resistor, the oscillation between the capacitor and inductor will dampen over time. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So again, from a standard perspective, we're going to use Kirchhoff's rules to add up the voltage drops around the circuit. So the sum of all the voltages around the circuit should add up to zero according to Kirchhoff's rules. So let's figure this out. So first of all, the voltage drop across the resistor is going to be minus the current times the resistance. The voltage drop around or across the capacitor is going to be minus Q over C. And finally, the voltage drop across the inductor is going to be minus um, L times DI dt like so okay now since we know that i is equal to dq dt we could replace the i here and the i there by dq dt so we say that zero is equal to minus dq dt times r minus q over c and minus l times the ddt of dq dt Notice then, and then rearrange, well, I'll, I'll wait about the rearrangement, otherwise we might get a little confused here. So zero is equal to minus dq dt times r minus q over c, this is a q, and uh, minus l times d square q dt square. And again, that looks like a differential equation of the variable q. Uh, now we're going to divide both sides by l, get rid of the negative signs, rearrange the terms. This is the first term, second term, third term. So zero is equal to, if we divide everything by l, we get d square q dt square. The middle term right here would be um, plus r over l dq dt. And finally, we get uh, plus q over lc. And so this is a very different kind of differential equation that we saw before because of the resistance in there. We have three terms. The solution to this differential equation is rather complicated to figure out. You need kind of advanced mathematics, but let me just write down the solution to this equation for your benefit. So the charge as a function of time is equal to the total charge placed on the capacitor times the dampening factor that came from the resistor, which is E to the minus R over 2L times time, times the cosine of the frequency of oscillation, which is now dampened a little bit. So it's not going to be quite the same as before. It's going to be 1 over the square root of L times C minus reduced by the quantity R over 2L squared. And that the whole thing would be times the time T minus the phase angle, or I should say plus the phase angle, like so. So this came, this is very much like the old equation that we had when we didn't have a resistor in there. Let me write down what that equation looked like. It had Q as a function of time is equal to the total charge Q sub naught times the cosine of omega, which is 1 over the square root of LC times T plus the phase angle. So notice it looks very similar to that. The only thing is that we have now a dampening factor in there, so something that reduces over time exponentially. And then we have the frequency of oscillation, which is omega, which is 1 over the square root of LC, uh, reduced by this quantity right here. Notice the bigger the resistor, the more the reduction in the oscillation frequency. So that doesn't look all that different than we did before. Now, let's pluck some numbers in there to get a feel for it, because ultimately, we're supposed to find the oscillation frequency of this damped LRC circuit, which is this right here. So this thing right here is the new oscillation frequency, so we call this omega prime. This is when we have a dampening factor in there. And so omega prime is equal to uh, the quantity 1 over the square root of LC minus R over 2L squared, or we can write R squared over 4L squared, like that. So that's our new omega prime. Let's first again find out what our old omega was. So omega, which is equal to 1 over the square root of L times C, is equal to 1 over the square root of L, which was 0 0.5 henrys, times C, which was 8 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, like that. And 
If I remember right what that was, let's quickly figure it out. 0.5 times 8 e to the 6 minus equals. Take the square root of that. And, oh, that didn't come out right. Let me try again. 0.5 uh, times 8 e to the 6 minus equals. Take the square root and then take the inverse of that. And indeed it is 500. So the oscillation frequency in radians per second of the undamped circuit, if the resistor wasn't there, was 500 radians per second, which was about 80 cycles per second. Now, how much will it have slowed down based upon the damping factor here? Let's figure that out. That's omega prime is equal to, well, we know that this was 500 radians per second minus r squared, so it would be 100 squared divided by 4 times L squared, which is 0 0.5 squared. Now 0 0.5 squared is 0.25, that's a quarter times 4, which is 1, so this cancels out. So it would be omega squared is equal to 500 radians per second hmm, minus 10,000 radians per second. Oh, what does that mean? That's an interesting result. What that means is that it's so damped that it's actually over damped. The 100 ohm resistor would almost instantly stop the current from flowing and you probably wouldn't even get a single oscillation going. So just to kind of get a feel for what it would be like if it wasn't quite as big of a resistor. So let me make the resistor a little bit smaller. So let's say that we had a 20 ohm resistor instead of a 100 ohm resistor, and if we change it to 20 ohms, then 20 squared would be 400, and then you can see your new oscillation frequency would now be 100 radians per second instead of 500 radians per second. So it would oscillate a lot slower because of the resistor in there. Now, also, based upon that, the second question is, what is the maximum charge after one second? How long would it take for these oscillations to die down? Now, for a 20 ohm resistor, um, don't know how long that will take, but again, let's take a look at this portion of the equation right here. And so what that means is if you have a, an oscillation of a circuit where you have charge being pushed between capacitors and inductor like that, you're going to have a dampening effect where the oscillations are going to reduce in amplitude, which is controlled by this term right here. So let's find out how big that is. So we have the E to the minus R over 2L times time. And let's take 20 ohms for a resistor instead of 100 ohms. That might work a little bit better. So what is that term equal to? So this term, when T equals 1 second, what is E to the minus R over 2L equal to? Well, let's find out. So E to the minus R over 2L times 1 second uh, is equal to E to the minus, well, R was 20 and 2L is 2 times 0 0.5 times 1, and so that would be e to the, um, well, that's equal to 1, so that's minus 20. Wow, e to the minus 20 is a very tiny number, so within one second, the oscillation would have virtually stopped. So it doesn't take much of a resistor for the oscillation to stop almost to zero. So only for very small resistors would the oscillation keep going for any length of time. Once the resistor gets big enough, it stops it almost instantly. So. A resistor, anything bigger than a few, few ohms, will stop the oscillation rather quickly. So e to the minus 20, let's do it real quick. It's a very small number. Oh, it's uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 9 nanoseconds. So this is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 9. So you can see that in a matter of a few nanoseconds, the oscillation would stop. So it, um, it's a rather small period of time before the oscillation comes to a complete stop. Right. And that's how you do it.